Hello, and welcome to Call of the Tuesdays. We are here for Paper Chase. So, I'm gonna get right into it, I think, and explain our introduction to the story. Years ago, archaeologist Enoch Quincy had graduated from Miskatonic University as the prize pupil of his mentor, Dr. Jones, a member of the Society for the Exploration of the Unexplained, or the SEU for short, has given Enoch many opportunities to explore even more ancient ruins abroad. Enoch was given his job first in Egypt on a five-year expedition. Now Enoch is himself not a man of wealth, but his parents are of considerable means and status. At the beginning of his expedition, he got news from back home. News of his uncle, Douglas Kimball. He disappeared from his home for no reason. Enoch receives word that he is the one to inherit his uncle's property. Not much he can do from Egypt, but not to worry, Douglas' trusted butler, Jameson Adams, will keep the place while he is away. And now to present day, the year is 1922. Enoch Quincy, <clears throat> your five-year expedition is over now. A letter arrives as you're packing your things from home. Jameson's worried and asks you to help investigate some things he thinks have been stolen from the house, your new home. He's looking forward to your return he has everything prepared for you. Your family has paid for you to have a personal driver for as long as you like. A man named Luther Yeski. He picks you up from the airport and starts to drive to your home. And that is where we're going to start. The sounds of the car traveling toward Arnoldsburg, Michigan to the address of 218 Aylesbury Street. Enoch, what do we see as you sit in the car this overcast morning traveling to town? What does Enoch look like? Clean shaven, wearing just a normal brown hat, in a tidy suit with a red tie. And the driver, the man in front of you, he seems to be driving with ease through the streets of Aylesbury. It's like an old fashioned German kind of town. And what does Luther look like? Can you describe Luther? Luther is a very large sort of squarish man in a suit that's probably two sizes too small for me for him that he's sort of uh, borrowed from a relative or something. Um, he's got a very stern look about him and uh, looks like the sort of man that uh, doesn't give much thought to too many things, but uh, possibly could uh, take a few punches to the face and looks like maybe he has done in previous days. <laughs> As you drive in this overcast morning, it's about 7.30 a.m. No doubt the travel in the airplane was very long from Egypt to here. So you might be a bit tired, a bit jet lagged. Is there anything you talk about on your journey to the house? I mean, I notice, Enoch notices that Luther's a bit there's something about him and he turns around and he goes relax a little Luther just you look so uptight like you're ready to explode or something uh I'm sorry boss it's it's all a bit new to me uh I'll uh I'll sort of like warm to it a bit hopefully You been where we're going? Only a couple of times when I was a kid. Alright. He 
go through the streets. The day is starting to rise up. <clears throat> the town's pretty quiet this early in the morning. It's a small town. You arrive at the outside of the Kimball house. This house is meant to look cozy to you. There is little gardens, a high stone wall fence on the side. I will have it on pause so you can look around all around the house if you want. And as you get out of the car, Luther, I'm assuming you get his bags? Uh, yeah. It would take him a bit to realize that that's what he's supposed to do. Oh, you mean you don't have to? <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get your bags, boss, sir. Uh, uh, did you did you pack much? No, nah, there's only the one bag in there. Oh, not not staying long <laughs> then. At this point, I don't know even know what's going on. The door opens. We'll switch to the interior of the house, uh, where the door opens to Jameson, your butler. Coming out at the sound of the car, he greets both of you, looks at both of you up and down, and I need you two to make appearance rolls for me. Oh, wow, Luther. What is that? You are like <laughs> Even though this suit is two sizes too small, it looks clean and tidy. Jameson looks you up and down. He looks at Enoch Quincy with hard success. And he's like, greetings. I am Mr. Adams. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Quincy, at last. Uh, I was Douglas Kimball's manservant and butler for several years. I have everything inside prepared for you and I have a guest room prepared for you, Mr. Yeski, if you'd like to come in. Sure. And you can follow him in. As you know, your dear uncle has been disappeared and gone for five years now, unfortunately. And I haven't heard anything more about his disappearance Lately, though, uh, I don't touch the study because, as you know, your uncle adored books so much so he kept them almost like a shrine in there. But I've noticed some have been missing. I didn't report it to the police because I felt I didn't feel it was necessary to report books. So I thought I'd take the matter up with you when you get back to come look at them maybe maybe figure out which books his studies in this way and he will um head towards this way and if you like i can move you both depending on what you want to do to the study yeah yeah all right and I will move this so everyone can see. As you go into the study, everything looks kind of cozy. The fire's lit. There's food on the table ready for you. When we get the study, the library is so impressive. Every wall is covered in books. The tables are covered in books. The corners are covered in books. He hasn't seemed to touch anything in this room at all. So there is a little layer of dust. Uh, obviously, he, Mr. Kimball must have been very dear to him and knew that his books were precious. Or maybe he was just leaving it there. So make a spot hidden roll for me. Oh my god. Almost thought that was a hundred. <laughs> Luther. 
as you're looking straight ahead of you over here, you notice there is a space where six little spaces of no dust, almost like perfect little book imprints, are gone. Man, there's a lot of reading stuff in here. I'm not much a reader myself. It, it looks like there was something there, though. Like, did you come in here and 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 buttle? Is that the word for it? Buttle. Is that what you like? You're a butler, so. No, is I it... I have not cleaned in here, Mister Esky. No. Right. So. You would understand that, like at church, he would read the Bible. At home, he would read. He would read over dinner. He would go outside, find a tree or something, read that. He never stopped reading. Uh, I always had hopes that he would come back and know that his books were left just as they were. But no, uh, I was hoping, being that you were, both, well, Mr. Quincy was from the university, that maybe he would have some sway to ask the police or investigate further, maybe help find his uncle? I mean, I can look around, see what I can find out. I know the uh, newspaper had published some articles on it, but I never kept any of them. But the library might have some of them. And, and you're welcome to stay as long as you like. I didn't see any windows smashed or or anything like that and luther actually both of you no luther you um knowing that you're kind of almost a bodyguard as well you look towards the windows with your success and they're not broken but they are loose like they could easily be pried open uh, and broken into. They're very old. Outside there you see almost like a little patio where you can go out. It is up to you what you guys discuss and what you want to do. You see the butler wringing his hands. I'll, I'll fetch you some breakfast, sir. And I, I'll put your bags in your rooms. And he leaves for you guys to talk. These windows don't look very sturdy. They look like, and he'll sort of like jam his hand under and see if he can lift the the window, assuming it's lifting. Are you using, the sort your, of window. Are you using your strength to? Yeah. Oh, and I feel like a, we have a rattleback door thing coming. Go ahead and make a strength roll for me. This will be the one that goes bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're no. pretty good. You, like, totally wriggle it. It's shut and it's locked, but just jostling it makes the whole lock rattle out and you pull it up. I mean, you could get through here easy enough, even if it was locked, if you really wanted to. I don't know why you'd want books, though. These books don't even look like they have many pictures. I don't mind pictures. The funny pages. You read the newspaper, boss? Man, I love the funny pages. No, too busy studying. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, doing the learning thing. Yeah. I guess now, that's why you're the boss. With that window, do you notice anything outside that looks obscure while you're over there? I mean... Not, not really. It looks kind of quaint, I guess. Maybe, you know, maybe if we go outside, maybe there might be signs of something, but yeah, not from in here. I mean, maybe the butler's just having us on. Maybe he took those books. He seemed... I mean, yeah. we won't know unless we search. We've got to try and figure something out about what happened here. Make one well, more spot hidden roll for me while you guys talk. Ooh. Luther.
answer there is a locked drawer over by the, well, there is a drawer with a little lock on it by the desk. Doesn't look like there's any key on the desk or anything like that. You, you want to search around the joint before uh, your man comes back, the, the, the butler guy? I mean, yeah, we can search anywhere. Come have a look at this desk, boss. And I'll go over and like point to the desk, and I won't open it myself because it's not my stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe like check the desk here. I don't know. All right. As you check the desk, there is it doesn't seem to be a key. You jostle the desk. Uh, it's very sturdy. Uh, it seems to be locked. So. You could pry it open. You could ask Mr. Adams for a key. Luthor. Uh, yeah. Do you know where that butler said he was going? I think he said something about a breakfast. Hmm. I wonder if he has a key or something to this. I mean, it's possible, boss. Or do you think we just try and rip the drawer open? I kind of get the feeling he wouldn't like that very much. He seemed a little bit uh, wound tight. Kind of like you said I was, but more so. He might be just worried about what's going on. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. He has been here for God knows how long looking after the house. What do you guys choose to do? Uh, maybe we wait and like it won't be too late to break it open if he doesn't have the key, I guess. No. Is there anything else that we've noticed? Nothing else of note catches your eye um so far you just see the missing books it looks like there were six and the locked drawer the windows easily open no signs of a break-in from the study that you know of that's all that's in this room what yeah, do you reckon sorry well go ahead what do you reckon we go have a look on the patio yeah I mean, if someone came in, like, maybe they dropped something or stepped on something. I don't know. It's kind of new to me. You're, you're the adventuring type, right, boss? I mean... I have done a lot of searching in Egypt. Yeah, Sandy over there, man. I don't, I don't think I like it. Um... Uh, I want to try and open the door. All right. Go ahead and open the door. Whee! Yay! As you open, there's a little garden. Um, if you were to look to your right, you will see um, a lovely little kitchen garden down below in the south southern part of the house for where there's grapes and vegetables and herbs growing. And you hear a ringing of a bell. Uh, signaling breakfast from Mr. Adams inside. There is a high uh, over this way would have been a high stone wall. Some of the wall I'll have you make a geology roll since you have it. Enoch. The rock there Oh my is god. Pretty, oh my gosh. The archaeologist <laughs> you can push it if you want if you want to uh, it's very old and it looks a little crumbled in places but it's uh, pretty sturdy nothing else of note out here well, doesn't look like there's much out here I yeah. mean if, the, if they did come in this way they were very careful 
Yeah, I don't really see anything about the windows from the outside. I'll sort of have a look and see if I can see anything, and I'm guessing I can't. Not much, no. But eh. It's pretty odd that you don't see anything. Uh, Mr. Adams comes to the doorway and he says, I, I heard that you're a fond of strawberry shortcake, so I took the liberty of, of making it. I don't know whether you like dessert for breakfast, but I kind of figure strawberry shortcake is very good with coffee. I mean, at this point, I'll eat anything. That food on the way here was crap. Oh, yes. Planes are terrible things. But I do have a question for you. That table inside, do you have a key for that locked drawer? Oh, i sure I could find it somewhere around here. I haven't opened it since the police had come five years ago. So, so if you'll allow me, give me some time. That's fine. Maybe while you guys look out in town, uh, get your bearings. I do know uh, five years ago, the neighbor lady was complaining about Douglas a bit. She might have some answers as well. Now that I thought of it, making your coffee, memories come back, you know? And anyway. Yes. What we'll do is we'll go eat and we'll figure out what we're going to do next. All right. And uh, he goes to the kitchen. So I will expedite this. We're not going to go over breakfast. Uh, is there anything else you plan to do? Well, um, I might walk back in and have a look at where the books were. Yeah. Now there are books on every subject possible. It doesn't. It seems like your uncle loved just the the act of reading itself. He's a bibliophile. He loved just everything possible from travel to history mythology botany everything the fantasy books he's got everything there and it doesn't seem to be in any order either it just seems to just it's as if he made his own order what are you looking for in particular anything just to see if i can notice anything that from my childhood or anything that looks strange or out of the ordinary on the desk you can make another spot hidden roll if you like while i bring it up oh nice two let me get this to you you see a picture of your uncle this is your uncle, Douglas Kimball, as he was last seen when you last saw him, and it seems to be the most recent picture of him, so it seems as if that would probably be what he looked like when he disappeared as well. You see that kind of like in between two books on the shelf, like a little framed That is pretty much it. You, you find anything interesting there? Oh, I found a photo. It might be the most recent photo of him, so we've got something to go off if we ever find him. Oh, that's him then. You don't think... I mean, five years is a long time for a guy to go missing. You don't think he maybe came back and grabbed his books and left I again? Mean, at this point, anything's possible. Man, I don't get all these books... You seen what those moving pictures? They're they're real impressive. I don't I don't understand this reading stuff, but those moving pictures are pretty pretty good. You should sit down and read a book sometime. Yeah, I don't know if I'm made for that kind of yeah. I sort of open one up and flick through it and, and put it back. <laughs> The question is, do you know how to read? I mean, yeah, I did my book learning at school. I just, uh... Or is that more of your, uh, 
comic sort of guy. Oh yeah, the like I said, the funny pages they they're, they're a lot of fun though. <laughs> I was more into fighting back in the day, boss. So I didn't have much use for books and learning and stuff like that. Look, I'll tell you what. We get through this. I'll sit down and read the comics that you show me. Then you can sit down and read one of my books, which I think you'll feel quite interested in. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm... Yeah. Sure, boss. The book you've picked up is A Call to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Okay. It's the only book I know that was back then. <laughs> that, that book gets around, I tell you. <laughs> Uh, so you have your breakfast. It's very good. Um, it seems like Jameson Adams is very, and he asked you to call him Jameson. So Jameson is very happy to finally have someone else in the house to serve instead of just keeping an empty house clean for no one. So he's really gone out of his way. To prepare everything for you. The coffee is hot and freshly brewed. Everything smells delicious. You eat. Um, he tells you a couple of the places in town. And he explains more about your uncle. Your uncle um, loved his peace and quiet. Uh, so he doted on taking care of your uncle. And it was very easy for him to do because all he wanted to do was just in a, in a quiet place to read. But he would often complain about the hobos and vagrants nearby that were camping. And he tried to rally a campaign to drive them off, which the police kind of ignored. So that was pretty much the last thing that happened before he disappeared the day he disappeared he left with some of his favorite books and he never returned with one favorite book and never returned he would often find little spots out and about that he would sit and read so it wasn't her it wasn't unheard of for him to leave and they never came back and after nightfall um jameson reported he was missing but people didn't look for him for a while because he's an adult. He was probably off, you know. And then after a while, they looked for him and he had left without a trace. So a year down the line, the house was given to you, Enoch. And Jameson has been trying to look ever since, but he is not much for being persuasive or charming or any or deductive in looking for research or anything like that so he hasn't heard much of anything else he tells you there's a library in town there's a, a newspaper called the uh, Arnoldsburg advertiser there's a police station and I did say library didn't I I think that's about it and there are some neighbors, very few, um, that are out and about coming up and down the street in front of the house. About two houses, that's all that is really around you. That's pretty much all he can remember of note. Alright. What do you think we should do, Luthor? I mean, I guess we could talk to the people around maybe those hobos he was trying to chew off might know something those hobos they they're tough folk uh, and also we've got the neighbor that i think the butler said was he was having problems with wasn't it yeah yeah lady lady put in some complaints or something i think no a lot of Yes, I don't know her name, but I think she was, listed. the police would know. She did complain. 
No, what do you reckon we had done the police station first? Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, it was a long time ago your uncle went missing, and hell, if we even just find these books, we probably need to start with what happened five years ago now? Jeez. I mean, who knows? They may have found something in that time. Yeah. Some possible right. lead we can go off. I will drive you wherever you need to go, boss. You got it. We get into the car. We're just going to switch to the, our town thing. Town thing, we call it. That's a technical term. Uh, and you head towards the police station. As you go in, your typical precinct police station, back, but this one's in a very old style building, this German style looking building. And you come in, the bell on the door rings. Uh, you see a private detective just sitting on his desk. Hardly any crime goes on here, so they don't have a lot of people. He looks up. Curious to see the door open at this time of day. And you see on his desk it says Mallory across the little nameplate. Can I can I help you too? Uh my name's Enoch. Apparently there was a report of my uncle going missing or something from five years ago. Do I've only just found out myself. Your uncle? Oh! Are you Kimball? Kimball? Yes. Oh! Ah. That's interesting. Well, welcome home. Do you have... Are either of you... Uh... Contacts with the law? At all? Like... Have you guys dealt with the law before, if you feel... I mean, I probably would have been trespassing in pyramids and all that. <laughs> in a positive way. <laughs> well, no. I was going to say, no, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> Luther probably has not had positive experiences with the law. This might not go well. All right. You can make a charm, persuade. You can fast talk. I do not suggest intimidate, but, you know, it's your game. So, to see if you can... Um, if the way that you've come across and said that will be good. Did you guys roll? Did you get a two? No, I haven't rolled. I wasn't paying attention. What did I roll? I decided to... You get four choices. Charm, persuade, fast talk, which is kind of like bribing the guy or uh, intimidate. Fast talk. <laughs> that didn't go well. <laughs> um, what would you have been trying to do, Luther? Um, he would have been like, uh, trying to, you know, bring up that uh, his boss is uh, fairly influential, and we could use any assistance we could get and you know maybe you could help us out there's missing items from the house and he'd sort of be stumbling over his own words a bit and he's like maybe you should do the talking boss i'll just i'll just stand here and he looks you up and down he leans back in his chair oh uh, one of these guys huh thinks like privilege can just okay yeah so it's up to you, Enoch. Mm. Don't forget, you guys in chat can give these guys a bonus die. For their I've all, I've got a bonus die. Oh, there you go. Magic, magic gave it to me. Thank you, magic. You um, bonus die. I'll try and persuade him. And I just put it up to plus one, don't I? Yep. Ooh. Well, he's look 
looking at you. And he says, there haven't been any odd looking people in recent days, all right? Not, no, there's been no reporter break ins. Uh, we arrested a cat burglar a while back, but that I don't think that's related to what you guys are talking about. And other than Mr. Kimball making up a fuss of trying to get rid of the hobos. Yes, we were told about that. Yeah. And then we went there. And it was as quiet as the grave, so no hobos at all. By the time we went there and looked it over. Interesting. Maybe. Ten. Get many hobos? <clears throat> no, I mean, not since then. We haven't had anybody come through at all. They're just visitors and the people that live here. I mean, I remember there was a complaint in the paper a while back, but... I don't remember what was said. Anything else I can get for you? And he's kind of like put off with those rolls, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think what we'll do is we'll leave you to it. But thank you for what information you gave us. All right. Now, next door you did see uh, the library. And behind the police station is the newspaper office. The day is yours. It's probably about 10 now. No, it's a, I, yeah. I don't know why you thanked him, boss. He didn't give a squat. Man, Always Lord, being I swear, nice. useless. <clears throat> ah, Luther. Well, it gave us nothing. Like Luther, are you outside told us... the building now? Yeah, outside. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it could could rumble with the cops. Get it started, hot and heavy. Go on, <laughs> Luther. Sometimes. Yeah. What What's that mouth? It can get you in trouble sometimes. Trust me. Yeah, Trust I wasn't me. thinking of using my mouth, boss. Some people need a little. I know, but sometimes that that you got to be nice to get anywhere. Sometimes yeah, it pays didn't... off. You're right, boss. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll stick to letting you do the talking. I mean, you can do the talking. It's just don't try and not use your fist, please. Yeah. Enoch? Enoch Quincy, is that you? My gosh, you've grown so big. I need you two to make an appearance roll for me. As you turn around, you see your uncle's neighbor. You're looking very nice, Enoch. She's really pleased to see you. Jeez, Luther, you say you're ugly, but damn. <laughs> 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 she... She sees you and she's like, well, who do we have here next to you? Is this, is this your friend? And she's a very old lady, but she's still like fixing her hair. I am Miss Lila Odell. And she raised, puts her hand out for both of you. Uh, actually for Luther. Uh, Miss, Mr. Yes, ma'am, I'm, uh, Enoch's driver. No. Oh, all right. You, yes. I guess you live here. Oh yes, I'm. Uh, I'm. Well, I'm your neighbor now, Enoch. So, yeah, I live right. Oh, is this the? Way. You reckon this might be the, the lady? You know, Luther. The, the lady. I mean, you're obviously a a lady. Um, I'll be quiet now. I mean, like I only had a brief summer dalliance with Mr. Kimbo long ago, but it was that lady? Oh. Anyway, 
it's so good to see you since since you since you finally come back. How long are you staying? I mean, at this point, I'm not sure. Well, I remember your dear uncle forever reading he was. Did he? Didn't he pass away or something like that? I don't know, but excuse me, ma'am. I need to say something to Luther real quick. She Luther? Nods. Yeah, boss. When a lady puts a hand out like that, you're meant to kiss it. <laughs> Just a kiss on the hand, it shows respect. Oh. Yeah, she kind of looks a bit frail, and I'm maybe a bit. I mean, they put all these things all over their hands and the, the perfume. And... You, you don't have to be scared. It's okay. She's getting Just a very sticky time. peppermint out of her pocket and dusting it off and putting it in her mouth. She's like 73. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like doing that thing. And she's like sucking on it really loudly. Well, I've got to go. And get groceries. It was lovely meeting you. I'll be over with a with with some some dinner or something. Stop by. Sure. We'll see you soon. And she goes. And you are left with uh, choices to make. I reckon we go to the library, Luther. What do you think? Uh, or is that? Not a place for you. Like I said, I'll take you where you want to go, boss. I don't... I don't really got no preferences. Well, you're lucky because it's only walking distance. Yeah, well... That's true. You don't think that lady was... Maybe the lady that was complaining? Although she did seem to... Be kind of keen on... Your uncle from what she... Saying. Well, I mean, I think she was more keen on you, Luther. Uh, no, no, don't. Let Let's go to the book place. Let's. Uh, you just start walking. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, in the right direction. All right. The library is a very large, large building in town. It is. Pretty immense. As you go in, all the books, two stories up. It's going to take you a while. What is, are you looking in particular for any like of those newspapers or anything that was mentioned? Yeah, uh, newspaper articles. So you're going to be scanning back through about five, six years' time to be safe. Yep. Uh, you need to make a successful library use role as you guys oh, are God. looking and it's going to take some time wow three look at both of you guys <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take some time like I said you go and you're looking through uh, a librarian comes by and asks if you need any help she's going to expedite that by knowing exactly where to go. She takes you over to the old newspapers and you're looking through and you're going to find I'm getting the handout for you. A newspaper article from the Arnoldsburg Advertiser about uh, earlier this weekend there was an alleged sighting of a band of people apparently unclothed who were cavorting in the cemetery according to one frightened witness who has decided to remain unnamed I saw them moving around in the cemetery I swear I did really Despite this witness's claims, when the constable was summoned, he searched the entire cemetery but reported that no sign of this band was ever found. However, the police department has disclosed to the advertiser that misshapen or more likely ruined footprints 
were uncovered, giving mute evidence to our witnesses' claims. And that was from a little bit before, it was like 10 years ago, I do believe. No, less than 10. So it was way before your uncle went missing. But you found that. Do you show Luther? Yep. Luther, what do you make of this? What do you reckon? They had naked folk getting about town. In a cemetery, to be more precise. Maybe this town's a bit more lively than I thought. I mean, to be rolling around in the cemetery, doing whatever the hell they were doing. You don't reckon your uncle got mixed up with that kind of stuff? Oh, please don't put that thought in my head. Oh, please. That's, that's something I don't want to think about. I'm hoping it's not. I mean, you pointed it out, boss. I, <laughs> I don't know what this has to do with where your uncle is, but... Well, you know. could it have something to do with the bums that he was complaining about also? No, the hobos, sir, not the... Not the bums. Well, hobos, I apologize. I mean... I mean, it could... I could do, I suppose. I mean, this newspaper article could mean anything at this point. I mean, there's a lot of them in here. Hard to know which ones are relevant. Such a big place full of... All this stuff. It might be something to think about. Yeah, I don't particularly want to think about naked people in the cemetery. No, it just might be something to think about. The whole oh. cemetery it might be to keep in the back of our minds. Yeah, I guess. To... The librarian comes back with um, another stack of newspapers. She says, you know what? Uh, sometimes they have files at the actual advertising place um, on some of the stories they have if they're big you know they, they do research and and you could try asking Mr. Malloy over there he works there he's pretty good might be worth a shot and she walks away And next bet's the newspaper place. Yeah, I was worried you were going to say the cemetery, but yeah, newspaper. Well, I mean, we can go to the cemetery if you want. I mean, only, only if you think that's best, boss. I don't know what we'd be looking for in the cemetery. I don't know. There could be hobos living around there. I mean, isn't this paper old? I mean... A lot can change in that time, can't it? Well, I hope naked people in the cemetery haven't been there since 1909. That's a long time. All right, let's just go to the newspaper place and have a look. We'll see right, what we can us. find. Right. You go. Uh, it's probably getting to be, because it took so long to research through all the papers for five years, uh, we're going to say that it's started to get to dusk. Um, but the newspaper is still open. Uh, Artie Malloy is at the desk and he's like, hey, hi. And he shakes your hand vigorously without asking, like waiting for you to, he like grabs it. Hi, hi. Uh, come here for a story? Because we really need one. This place is dead. I mean, I came to see if you had a newspaper from five years ago, I believe. Uh, we have lots of newspapers from five years ago. <laughs> but, I mean, usually we take them and give them to the library, but we do have files of uh, um, like editorial notes and things like that, if you want to try that. Sure. What, what's the date or what are we looking for? Or, or... I mean, my uncle was complaining about some stuff something about hobos 
I mean, this whole town's filled with old grumpy old men complaining about stuff. But yeah, uh, come over this way. And you need to make um, a library's roll. Uh, both if you want to help Luther you can help now depending on what you get depends on how much information you're gonna gain I'm gonna use the bonus die Oof. nope nothing you can push the roll nope <laughs> you, you can push the roll if you wish to push um... He's like, I just wish I knew more of um, what you're looking for, my like, uncles. And he's saying, I wasn't around when this happened. Do you want to push? Sure, I'll push it. All right. So you're probably asking him for, you know, just giving him more details, trying to help. So making another roll. Library use one. Mm -hmm. Which one am I rolling? Library use, um, just regular. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, Luther? You're gonna say something? You look like you're struggling there, boss. Yeah, I just, I don't know what's going on. It's going to take a long while. So he's getting tired. He's like, you know what? Um, I have some files down below. Uh, why don't you go look down there? And he leads you down to like the basement area where all the files are. And it's going to take you about two hours as you're looking in there. And you're getting tired. Uh... You hear the lights go out. You, you, you see the lights go out, but you also hear a click. And then you hear a door shut and lock upstairs behind you. What well, do you do? Fuck. Yeah, that ain't good, boss. I, I think that newspaper fella might have forgot we were down here. And now it's dark, and I think I heard a lot. Well, it's okay. I got a flashlight. All right. So you turn on your flashlight. You're looking around. Um, are you going to go back upstairs? What are you going to do? I'm going to go check the door. The door is securely locked. Now, do either of you, you can, you have several options that you can discuss what you want to do, and I will tell you what you can roll. Don't suppose you're good at picking locks, boss. I, I could break it, I guess. I don't know the newspaper guy would be happy with that. I mean, I can try lock picking it, but I haven't done it in a little bit. Yeah, we'll give it a go. It's easier than replacing a door. All right. So we can do a locksmith here. And that is a fail. So you try and do the lock and it is not budging. You could have a me mechanical repair to look at the lock more closely and maybe try again. You could use a strength to break through the door or you can give me a look roll. Yeah, but let me have a look. I, I really don't want to break this door down. Did you get that lock pick stuck in there, boss? Jesus. If you need to get that door down, you do whatever it takes. Well, let me try it subtle first. I I don't do subtle well, but I'll sort of reach in and try and mess with the lock mechanical repair first. So Enoch holds the torch while you look at the lock. It ain't hap <laughs> it ain't happening, boss. It's you jam that in there right proper. Just a bit. 
You guys are able to spend your luck points as well. The mechanical repair did not go so well. He's, it's kind of, the lock might be stuck in there a little bit, but you can use your luck, uh, the lock might be stuck in there a little bit, but you can use your luck points if you guys choose to, to make that luck into a success. Yeah, I don't want to break my, my tools on the door. You really jammed it in there good. I think maybe the lock is busted and maybe just cut our losses and jam this door open the old fashioned way. I like your thinking. All right. You're going to try and make a strength to yeah. break the door. Well, that is a success. So you put your shoulder into it, or how are you breaking down the door? Yeah, so I sort of like push my shoulder into it, sort of lean to get it to move a bit, then back up and then just slam my shoulder into the side of the door. All right. And it opens. Uh, looking around quickly, um, make a luck roll for me, Luther, to see if anyone's around did you say look or luck luck yeah i was look. gonna say look, look is not a roll look make a luck roll <laughs> <laughs> hey that's bad oh. you see miss odell um slowly getting her stuff together she has a, a flashlight in her hand you don't know why a seven-year-old woman's out here but she like gets startled and uh starts to run to go get help someone there's a man breaking out of the building breaking out of the building we were locked in the room it's all right, ma'am. We're just we're just trying to get out. We were we were left in here, ma'am. She's, oh. she's ran off, so she moved quick for an old lady. She is. She's spry. <laughs> yeah. Let's just try to get out of here before anything else goes wrong. We'll just yeah, come back tomorrow. I don't want to get locked up tonight. <laughs> Do you book it for your car? Um, and you are you headed home? Yep. All right. <coughs> so we'll switch to our outside. As you're headed home, Mr. Jameson uh, comes to the door and greets you and says, by the way, uh, I, I found the key to that desk and I thought I'd, I'd give you this right now it's it's Mr. Kimball's diary it looks like Ooh. let me have a look <clears throat> as you look at the diary I will have another handout for you no it's gonna be a bit hard to read but I'll read it out loud so you can see there's two pages. So this is page one. It says, Dear Diary, it's been an incredibly frustrating day. It seems like you remain my constant companion throughout these troubled times. Well, you are my other books, of course. I'm truly uncertain what could ever happen if I were to somehow leave them. The people of this town have very little, if any, imagination. They simply exist and go about their monotonous lives living in insolence. Not only that, but despite, they nevertheless demand things of me. Even now, I am sure that there is going to be some sort of family gathering in merely a few weeks. Nevertheless, I've had the most intriguing experience. I managed to discover something, a creature, unlike any animal known to my fellow men, moving about the cemetery throughout the night while I read. It seems to pay me no mind but I saw it slip down the network of tunnels below the cemetery I cannot help but be astounded and amazed by such a revelation I must admit it is simply possible that I have been dreaming 
I was reading Bram Stoker's Dracula, but I think this would be an excellent source for some inspiration for a book. And then the second page, which has less to read, says... Dear diary, I have been thought I have thought about it and I am now reaching a decision. There is little here right now and in all honesty I feel that I should join with my friends below. I'm sorry to say goodbye to these entries, but the demands of society are becoming too much. How can one man be expected to pay his bills, make an honest living? cook meals, clean his house, and all the while saving time to enjoy the finest works of literature humankind has to offer. It's truly a near insurmountable challenge. Nevertheless, it's time for me to depart. I never got to finish Dracula. Goodbye. Sincerely, Doc Douglas Kimball. Uh, I'm going to admit, sirs, that, that I did, I did look at it. And, uh, I don't believe that he was a delusional man, but at the same time, I don't believe that there's some kind of creature running around the, the cemetery. There, there were vagrants there, and uh, maybe one of them had taken him, and I'm a bit worried. Maybe I never thought to look. It's but, okay. We'll go have a look tomorrow. Maybe he went and joined the nudists. I mean, I don't want to be disparaging about your uncle, but... I mean, there is like a little crack in the, in the, in the wall back there, I think, maybe, that, that could have... He could have taken a shortcut. Sounds like he was a little cracked. I mean... <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, yeah, we could go look tomorrow during the day, right? Yes, yeah, so well, we need to get some sleep. All right. Uh, Mr. Adams nods, and he uh, returns. Uh, well, do you keep the diary actually on your person? With you? Yep. So he will uh, return in and get your rooms ready. And we will skip to daylight. Unless you guys want to talk, or do you want to sit in the study? Or anything else that you guys want to do. What do you think of this diary, Luther? I mean, being honest, sounds like your uncle was a little bit cracked. I mean, I had that thought too. I mean, one entry seemed fine, and then the next entry, he's... Worrying about his how to make a living and he's gonna go underground. Yeah, that's I don't know what were the dates with those entries, how far apart? You remember? No, not off the top of my head. I'd have to have a look again. Bring him back up. You got you look and one is nineteen well those dates are wrong actually. They're going to be dated five years before. So right almost the day when he left. Now the thing we've got to ask ourselves, what happened in that time? I mean, maybe he's doing just fine. Like, sometimes people just get up one morning and they're like, hey, I'll want to do something different with my life and maybe he's out there happy as a, a pig in muck you know like maybe he come back for some of his books do some of that reading but maybe he's fine and maybe he doesn't want to be found maybe cemetery is a weird place to go to find yourself though I mean it looks, from how we're reading this, it looks like he turned into a weird person. Might just be the right place for him. Yeah, definitely during the day, though, boss. I don't, I don't want to go poking around with the dead in the night. It's okay, we'll go during the day and have a look. 
I mean, that old lady was unsettling enough. Ooh. Both of you make a luck roll. One off. <laughs> you could spend a one luck and make it a success. Yeah, I'll do that. No, oh, well, you don't. You might not have to live through on there because that's all. Uh, you mm. hear a knock. I won't switch the interior or anything, but you guys are inside the house, and you hear a knock on the door, a bit frantic. Adams goes to answer, and it's a very nervous and frightened Mr. Malloy, Artie Malloy, from the. He goes, "I am so sorry. I am so sorry." I forgot all about, I got all the way home and then I forgot that you guys were down there and I rushed over and the door was broken and I realized I locked you guys in. I'm going to get fired. I am so sorry, Mr. Quincy. I, I, uh, I wanted to make it up to you. Yeah, you lucky I don't break something else. You can't lock my boss downstairs in the dark like that. I know, I know. I, and I'm, I don't want to lose my job. So I, I did some extra digging, uh, uh, kind of like a peace offering. And that's why it's taken me so long to get all the way back up here. Cause I had to ride the bike. Um, I, I found, uh, one note, um, regarding the newspaper story, uh, on the cemetery. And he, he hands over a paper, but his hands like shaking. Do you take it? Yeah, I'll snatch it out of his hand. And, and uh, James, Miss Jameson uh, adds, "Will that be all from from Mister Malloy tonight, or do you wish him to come in, sir?" No. At this point, I don't want to speak to him. Right, and he just slams the door on <laughs> Mister Malloy. You get this paper. So, I don't know if you can read that, but that is from uh, the editor staff. Concerning the follow-up cemetery story, interviewed Mrs. Hilda Ward. Mrs. Ward claims she's seen devil spawn. They've been stalking around the burial ground nearly 20 years. Faces like dogs, feet with hooves, smelled of mold stench allegedly nearly knocked her out from her home mrs hilda ward has since moved to detroit ever following up none of her neighbors have corroborated such stories she has insomnia combined with mild hallucinations this is not a reliable witness sean and that is the piece of paper you get oh looks like we're going to cemetery luther yeah, I I guess so. That those descriptions are, whoa. and and like I said, you give a guy a little bit of something to worry about, and he's all, oh, how can I help you, sir? And please let me get you some tea. Like, if we'd done that with that officer, maybe we would. Well, I mean, yeah. this this is what I live for: looking for stuff that people would never find. Looking for things with dog faces and hooves for feet? You never know what's out there. You got a weird line of work, boss. I gotta be honest. In the daytime, though, right? I mean, how tired do you feel? I mean, it's all about being tired, boss. I don't, I don't want to go hang out with the dead in the in the dead of the night. You don't have to worry. I ain't worried for me, boss. It's you I'm worried about. I, I get, I'm not gonna get paid if something unseemly happens to you. And Mr. Quincy, do you really feel that that uh, there is a caretaker in the cemetery that you? He's in the morning, though. You could ask. Unless you feel you need to go tonight, I will get you some flashlights and things like that. 
We'll leave it to the morning. I need to sleep. I'm so jet lagged. All right. Uh, I will also turn in then. And he uh, bows and he heads up. Uh, and you have your rooms prepared. He did make sure and he went around and checked all the doors, locking them. He seems like he's feeling really guilty that stuff has happened while you were away. So he's making sure you see that he's being thorough, uh, trying to impress you. And you hear the sound of a bike pedaling off outside, grumbling to themselves. And that is all for the night for both of you. Yep. All right. Yep. Morning comes, breakfast is served. Uh, what time do you feel that you will be going towards the cemetery? Or are you going to check out this wall where Mr. Adams had said there is a shortcut? I probably will walk out and have a look at the wall more closely. All right. So, Luther, are you with him or are you doing something yeah. else? So, as you go around to the side, uh, you do notice that where the wall is crumbling, there is a break in it. I did not make that break, so I will delete this wall. And you see a path as you climb up and look over. It's a dirt path, so it's not like purposefully made. It seems to be very well worn through the woods. Want to go on an adventure, Luther? See where these path leads? Uh, I, I guess so, boss. If I think maybe this is where whoever took those books went. Maybe. If we're lucky. Yeah. Maybe so. Alright, all right, boss. I, where you go, I go. Alright, let's go. So we will move our scene to the cemetery on the fence now I know neither of you uh, speak hobos can't so I will ask if for like my, like a street smart role so uh, let's do an education role Use education or intelligence whichever is your highest you can pick Oh, Luther. <laughs> this is not very edumatated. But Enoch, uh, in his travels, uh, sees on the posts of the graveyard, and you know the symbol for unsafe. Things may get hairy here, Luther. I don't like the sound of that bus. That symbol there means unsafe. Right. Well, I guess it's probably unsafe for us, because when you're dead, you don't get much more dead than that, right? Yep, but we got to keep trekking on. All right. Uh, you see, uh, by the pill pulling up weeds is a very plain... Uh, short stature, kind of red hair. I will bring up a picture of him. He's pulling the weeds by the tombs, the mausoleums and such. Uh, and he's bent over and he doesn't see you. If I can get his picture. This fellow. He has like a, sh not a shovel, but like a hoe in his hand. And he does have some garden tools propped up. What do you wish to do? You walk up to him. Yeah, best you do the talking. I'm not sure I want to talk to sort of man to do this for an occupation willingly. 
where you talk to him and make a spot hidden roll for me and see if there's anything that might help you out in your conversation. Nope. These rolls, guys. These rolls. <laughs> there are advantages being given in the chat in case you need to use those. Alright, you can do Charm, Persuade, Best Talk, Intimidate. If you want to add that to your repertoire of thinking it would help in anything you have to say as you walk up to him. No, I'm not going to risk it. Alright, what do you just want to say? Uh, so. He stands up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I don't know you two from around here. I mean... I'm in that house that my uncle owned. Ah, uh, yeah. I was wondering if you had any information that you could tell me about him. Um, used to come by here. Doesn't really come by much anymore. Has he, any weird stuff happened with him around here at all? Uh, I'm not sure I remember too much. Do you want to push your roll? Sure. Or, or do you want to make a, uh, may, I guess, make any uh, other roles? Or Luther, do you want to do anything? Uh, boss, and I'm like, perhaps hand the man some cash. He seems like maybe cash might jog his memory if you get what I'm saying. Uh, I got a little cash here from you, from your folks. No. no, you keep your money. I've got money. It's okay. <laughs> You can make a luck roll, since you are kind of saying this right in front of him. <laughs> oh. Enoch Luther. Uh, he perks up a cash. Luther, you see a bottle sticking out of his pocket. Now, even though prohibition is a thing and alcohol is illegal, you're pretty sure that this person imbibes a little from time to time and he uh, holds out a hand and he's like Jefferson Melodious Jefferson I mean my memory it comes and goes it could use a little refreshing then I suppose yeah and I'll shake his hand and slip him a, a dollar. <laughs> You're know. trying to do the conversions real quick, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm like... A dollar's a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he takes it. He starts rubbing his head, thinking to himself... You haven't seen his uncle recently? I don't... I'm very superstitious. I don't come out here at night. Are you crazy? No way. There's rumors of dark figures in the cemetery. I'm not coming out of here. But uh, in the day, yeah, I used to see Mr. Kimball all the time. He, he had a favorite spot right over that away. He used to sit there every day. I can show it to you if you like. If you don't mind. All right. He walks over. It's up to you guys to follow up. Over here. The old tomb is worn smooth by age and weather. It makes it the perfect spot to perch and read a book. It's impossible due to all the weathering to find out who's buried here beneath this tomb and Melodius is talking to you. He doesn't know really why Mr. Kimball picked this spot in particular, but 
you can now make either whichever one you feel is higher a track roll or a spot hidden roll. All right. Enoch, as you look down, you notice that there are tracks in the mud and the dirt. They, they look like they start out as man-sized bare feet, but they end in cloven hooves rather than toes. And they seem to be leading in a specific direction if you were to follow them. Melodius doesn't see that. He keeps talking for his dollar's worth of time. It's just, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies talking about this again. It's not right. Don't mess with the spirits and speaking ill of the dead and all that, so. So good. Thank you for showing me. And he's going to leave. So, Luce, I reckon we follow these track marks that I see in the mod. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, kind of with that guy, though. I don't. I don't know. If we should be poking around in the in the purview of the dead. It's okay. We've got to do what we got to do. Yeah, right. You are, boss. To this mausoleum. The doors, instead of looking the way they do here, they look broken, and I have a picture, even though this isn't you guys. They look broken. And you can see darkness within. Are either of you carrying a torch on you? Yeah, I've got a flashlight. All right. Well, that guy ain't very good at his job. Look at the state of this place. Yes. As How would the doors come off like that? You can't make out what's inside, but it does look like it's off. And with a good, with some strength, you could open it. Luther? Y yeah. Do you want to use your muscles and see if you can get this open? You you want to go inside there? Yep. Right. Oh, um. Yeah. Give me a sec. And I'll try and open it. Um, it's my better judgment. Are you both standing in front of the doorway? Uh, so I'll put you both here. All right. You're gonna need to make a strength roll. I'm gonna use the bonus die. <laughs> Just in case. Oh no! It did not help. Do you? It's tough. It is. It's their stone. You can push uh, if you need to. Just gonna like put my back into it and use a bit of like. It's only one point of luck. All I right. Need, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my luck. As you guys. Uh, as Luther pulls and he tr it's not giving way and then he gives it his all and he pulls it slowly and you hear this whiff of the most horrible smell you've ever smelt in your life and I need you both to make con rolls they need to be extreme You both succeed though, but those are regulars. So you both, your mind starts to get a horrible pain and your vision fades and you black out. When you both come to, you flutter your eyes open, it's dark the mausoleum doors open and you see a hand dug tunnel down into the darkness and above you uh 
if you look towards the tomb, no, actually, you're going to look right here. You see someone standing over you. It's a rubbery, almost looking creature. Cloven hooves. Uh, tendrils. He stinks. There's mold across him. Pointy teeth and a long dog-like features on his face. I need you, Enoch, to make us. I need you both to make a sanity roll. First off. Nice. And then, Enoch, I need you to make one more. You see this and you keep your cool. And then you realize the wire rim glasses on his face. So I need you to make one more sanity roll. As you realize this is your uncle. And you keep your cool. No sanity loss for either of you. He starts to walk away with a book in his hand. And he goes and sits down by his tomb. You guys are laying flat on the ground in the dirt. You hear the chitterings and meeping sounds from the mausoleum way far away though, down below. Lisa? Uh-huh. Is it a pig? No, that that's my uncle. What the fuck has happened? Yeah. There's a description of the ghoul, and if you get the tab a picture, you'll see a picture of what you see. He does not speak to you. I hope you don't mind me saying, boss, but your uncle... In the looks department, he leaves a lot to be desired. Guess he's been out here for a while. Oh my god. I mean, it explains a lot. I'm just so confused on how this happened. Wanna go talk to it? I'm at him. Wanna go talk to him? I mean, we can try if we get an answer. Uh, I got your back, boss. You, you know the man. You go talk to him. I'll keep watch. All right. Give me your tokens to where you want to go. What do you want to say? He looks at you. Says nothing. Uh, uncle? Hello. What? How did this happen? And he shuts his book, and it's very odd to see a creature like this in a perfectly civilized gestures shut a book and look at you through glasses that are a bit cracked now and filthy. I... I was sick of it here. Sick. Vagrants ruining my peace and quiet. Nothing getting done about them. And I came here one night sitting here reading and I heard this meeping noise and he was so calm and quiet and I made a friend that day a friend that could get rid of all my problems and let me have some peace and quiet they have 
certain tastes. And hobos are very tasty to them. I get to read. I don't have to pay bills. I don't have to do anything. And after a while, I started to look like this. Uh. It's a good life. You could come. No, I enjoy my line of work. I enjoy not eating folks. You can come with me, but I won't be coming back here. I don't think they're shutting down this entrance for good. I've come back for my books one last time. I guess that's that mystery solved then. I mean, yes. What are you going to do with me? Most people will probably try and attack. I'm leaving you the house. But my friends will be here very soon. They don't differentiate family. Yes, but why didn't you come to me if you were feeling this way instead? I do believe you were in Egypt, dear boy. Have you met our family? You really want another Thanksgiving with them? It's horrid. I mean, for you, but not for me. Auntie Jane is a right nightmare, the old bag. So life was so bad that you need a peace and quiet. You started hanging out with people who eat folks in the cemetery. I don't judge them on their palate. They got rid of my problem. And you hear a scuffling coming from the mausoleum. He sits and opens his book again. Makes no difference to me. We will continue as we have been somewhere else. This town has dried up on corpses. So you're just gonna kill people for peace and quiet? Well, I'd like to have my books and just read. You know there's other ways to do that. I like this way. You know, there is... Sorry, go. I, I don't like that sound, boss. I, we've got to decide. We're going to stand here and make our stand against this way of life your uncle's chosen, or are we going to go? <coughs> and I'll grab my gun out and load a bullet into it. All right. We can't allow him to keep going. Mm. He'll I... pick the wrong person one day. I will fight back. Honestly. I hate that it's come to this. So do I, but you can't do what you're doing just for a bit of peace and quiet. And he sets his book down. And he dusts off his tattered pants that are filthy. 
and you hear two more ghouls behind you come out. They haven't made a move yet. They are sniffing the air, snuffling around. What do you do? Well, this just got interesting, Luther. And if you say so, boss, I mean, it's your call. You want me to shoot the old man? Do what you have to do. Uh, should have picked a different line of work. So you are aiming, uh, Luther, and we are going to begin our combat. Now, as Luther is aiming, he gets to add 50 to his decks. Now, it, it, we don't have to roll initiatives because it just goes by your decks. Uh, Luther, you get to go first. Mm. Don't forget to target. Yeah. You have him in front of you. All right. Go ahead and roll your rifle. Wow, you have an extreme success. <laughs> Yeesh. Apparently I ain't messing around. Alright, roll your damage. 16, alright. Go ahead and inflict the pain. As you do that, you notice his rubbery skin. It hits and it bounces a little. He's a little tougher than he usually is. I think I have to inflict the pain. And he immediately gets hit by a <laughs> and he gets prone he needs to make a con two are scuffling behind you is that all for your turn um yeah when I did that all right so it's him he's laying on the ground and so he's not going to do anything it's the school's turn over here. He's gonna run up to the closest person, which is Enoch. Now Enoch, how this works is he's gonna make a attack at you with his bite. And you can dodge. So on the chat it says dodge, fight back. No response maneuver choose what you would like to do dodging okay yep. click the dodge button and I don't know why my thing went up here go away all right so he does a bite and I think it rolled twice did my foundry stuff up one mine it says one does it say one? Okay, mine's lagging then. Did it take off on your sheet? No, it did not. Nope. Should have. Alright. That one worked. Alright, so he's gonna take give you two. This school's gonna come up. He's going to oh gosh, you're the closest thing. I'm sorry, Doc. You are closest, though. <laughs> Alright. He's gonna hit at you with his claws. Oh, and I targeted myself. So you can hit your dodge button and tell me and, um, and your skills instead. Because I was a dumbass and targeted myself. Fail. So they both fail. So he swings at you and you dodge and no one well, you failed your dodge. Yeah, no, you failed too. So mm -hmm. it's now Enoch. It's now your turn to fight back. 
What do you want to do? Well then. I'm going to take a step back. Mm, yeah, I'm going to take a step back. And I'm going to use my pocket knife. Go for it. At the ghoul in front of me. Can you target the ghoul? There you go. There you go. Alright, hit the brawl button in the chat. He's going to fight back. I don't think they do dodge. I think they just Fail. fight back. He's going to fight back and he succeeded. So that is one. It is your turn, Luther. You managed to take down. Um, he is still breathing, but he is unconscious. You have two in front of you attacking your boss. Dang it, boss. Be careful. I don't want to have to ring your ma and tell you what he cocked it in this godforsaken place. I'm going to load another bullet. Which take a little bit of time <laughs> how does that work oh uh i'm not gonna give you disadvantage because i think i was zicking around on your character and you had full bullets so you see the little revolver next to where it says zero yep you just keep looking until it's oh yeah it has four there you go okay so i so I'm not gonna get usually if you're out of ammo you disadvantage, but I, I was using your character to make sure everything was working so oh, okay. I thought it only had one bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um I must shoot the one in front of Enoch. Alright. Hopefully. No, your shotgun. Oh nice. Damn. Yeah. No damage. Yeah. Okay. All right, he's got a major wound. He falls down. He is still all right though so far. He's he's down though. Uh, it is now. I'm gonna say probably fell. Um, he's unconscious. We're gonna give him a check to see if he is still up. He's so good. It is now the school's turn. Gonna go over, try and bite again. Down on Enoch, it's gonna fail. Did you wanna fight back? Uh, yeah. And I didn't target because I hit Brawl instead of the actual bite. So I'll let you just um, roll your pen knife. And if you get a success, you will have a... Uh, yeah, go for it. I'm going to put no response right now. So, yep. Missed. All right. It is now Enoch's turn. It's your turn to fight back. What do you want to do? You've got this guy right here. That is still up. I'm gonna try and attack him with the pen knife again. Come on, dice. <laughs> what did you get? Didn't take from me. I think I'm lagging. I don't think it worked. I don't see anything. Uh, so you hit pen knife and it failed? Yeah, I got 55. Okay, yeah. So he'll try and bite back. I'll target you. They really need to, I need to figure out how to make this a little bit better. He's also failed, so. 
Luther. Nah. I'm gonna step up there because I don't want to shoot my boss <laughs> <laughs> in the back of the head. And I will uh, take a shot at this one that's trying to eat him. Yes. He's very hungry. Mm. Oof. Okay. Good God, you and that gun. Yeah, I know. Go for it. I mean, success when it counts, right? Yeah. Go ahead, I will. Oh, actually play. rolled the dice that time. Yeah, nice. Didn't roll them for the other ones, it just gave me a score. They are Might all be that down. I suggest we get out of here, boss. I don't know if they're going to get back up or if we can even kill them permanently. This one is too wounded and is falling dead. Your uncle and the other one are still trying to maintain breathing. Um, there is skitterings, more skitterings from the mausoleum. What do you want to do? I think you're right, Luthor. You. Yeah, this has got to be someone else's problem. I, we ain't equipped for this, boss. I only got one more round in the gun. Yeah, I think we need to try and get away. All right. Not going to do anything with the Muslim, or are you, or are you going to leave him there and you're just going to book it? Yeah. All right. Where well, you guys had it? Back to the house. You guys both run back to the house. As you start to run back to the house, do you look back at all? I try to go in over my shoulder. And you see these ghouls coming up out of the ground. They see their two friends and they start dragging them towards the mausoleum. And they roll a stone in front of it, shutting it behind them. As you run back to the house, Jameson's like, what? You're, oh, you, you smell terrible. Are you? And he sees the splatters of blood and bite marks on your neck and claw marks at your face. Are you, what happened? Are you okay? And he's rushing to go get a medical kit. Sit down, sit down, sit down. What's going on? Do I need to call the police? I found uncle. Is he, is he all, is he all right? No, he's going on a killing spree. What? And he looks just beside himself. Uh, confused. Do you know that news park, newspaper article we got? Yes. Explaining about the devil or whatever it is that lady saw. Yes. I mean, that's, yeah. That's him. <sighs> Me, Luther and I just saw him. Yeah, guy's gone full native. They eat folks in the cemetery. <laughs> Ever wondered where the hobos disappeared to? I just thought they left because they didn't want to deal with all the trouble your uncle was causing. You know, no, they, they were, were invited around for lunch and eating. I ain't hanging around here. We got to get out of here, boss. Those things could be coming any minute. It's fine. I saw them drag them back into the mausoleum and put a rock in front of the door so no one can get in or out. I find, a little... I find this very difficult. Well, then explain the bite marks and all that all over me. Yeah, that's, I mean, and he's trying to help get some alcohol and swab out and all of his bandages. I don't, should we phone the authorities or, or? What are the authorities going to do? I mean, they could investigate the tunnels, maybe, or? It's pitch black down there. Hmm. 
your uncle did say they were planning to move on. I, I don't feel right about it, but maybe this isn't our problem anymore. I don't think so as well. As the shark is wearing off, I need you two to make one last sanity roll. As um, what you've seen has come to a realization that these are indeed real things. Alright, Luther, roll a d6 for me. Alright, you lose one sanity point. Um, and you start breathing heavily just for like a, a couple seconds as it's you're realizing this is a real thing happening to you and these things these creatures are real you both will gain which i'll help you with later plus three to your cthulhu mythos for having learned about these beings what i take it i i don't know what to say mr quincy i mean are you going to be Staying here and, and dealing with this, or, or or would you like me to do something? I think it's best if I deal with it. All right, then. Uh, we that... need to end Rain to his terror at some point. You said they drug him back in, so he's still around. Yes, but he could pop up anywhere at any time. I wouldn't put it past them to eat them, those beasts. They was hungry for us, but those, your uncle and the other one we knocked down, they'd probably eaten them or something. If it wasn't for Luther, I'd be dead. Luther, are you all right? You need medical attention as well. No, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I want to get out of here. I don't, this town is, is messed up. Or do you think you should... I mean, I thought you would be staying here. You know, for good. Unless you choose to move back to the university. In which case I could see to the selling of the home. Or keeping it here for you. No, I'm going to stay here. I think it's best. All right, then. I'll get you a, a warm cup of something. Call me a nurse. And as he goes to the kitchen, uh, and we'll slowly start to fade out, you see, Mrs. Jameson, well, you guys don't see, but we see Jameson fill a bucket of raw meat and head out the back door. And with that, we will conclude for now our tale. It is a short one. Very well done, guys. Scripsy and Grim. I knew you couldn't trust a bottle. <laughs> you can't trust a bottle. <laughs> too shady I was gonna make him a good bottle I'm like just couldn't resist <laughs> <laughs> shady bastards shady bastards alright very well done you guys survived thank god you made it through <laughs> you will get alright there are um, some things you get to roll a 1d10 uh so you didn't lose any sanity, but Luther did. So you get to roll one d10, and you'll gain that back in your sanity points. And in addition to your three Cthulhu mythos for discovering ghouls, you get a plus one. So you'll get a total of four Cthulhu mythos for having Douglas Kimball still be alive at the end. So... Does my sanity go up the full or just to where it was? So you lost, yeah, I would One. say it's full. So yeah, it's just full. Yeah. And then we will go over your levelings. 
unless you want to do it on stream we can do it after stream if you wish um, and we can do it after i want to thank you guys for coming for Kalika tuesdays that was our tutorial paper chase i embellished uh, a little bit of it and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and maybe now that these guys are alive we get to see these characters again sometime in another adventure where hopefully the roles will be in their favor poor enoch the roles on appearance nope. and and shooting stuff yeah luther's a hottie apparently to the ladies the seven-year-olds <laughs> That'd be ancient for the twenties, man. She'd be. I know she's living the miraculous. life. Miraculous. Dancing nude in the graveyard does stuff, man. <laughs> so I will uh, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you thinking about my mod for helping out, and we will see you on Friday for D and D's with Grim and a couple of our other friends. So all the stories all the stories and stuff so join us then until then we will say goodbye see you later Bye. Bye. you did it